Hello YouTube world, Mac Daddy 1911 May one here with the Shady Tree Survivalist. Part two, securing coils. Um, as I just described in part one and other videos, a coil is a big roll of sheet metal. Some of it very thin, some of it very thick, but it is rolled up like basically like a roll of toilet paper or a roll of tape or whatever the case may be. You just have little tiny thin layers that's rolled round and round and round on a, a, a center hub and then uh, they secure it with straps and so forth. Um, strap iron, what, what, what they call it, but uh, thin sheet metal straps of metal that go around it to band it and to tie it to hold it together so it doesn't open out. Um, have a viewer who is just now getting into flatbedding and he is about to start uh, get his own truck he said in his training that they did not give him any training whatsoever on coils and how to secure them um this is an illustration of course this is supposed to be the trailer then the coil sitting here and you've got your rack your saddle built with your coil racks which are these pieces here your timbers, they can either be beveled or 4x4s depending on the type of rack you have. And then here, these little pieces sticking up are your mats that you would need. Rubber mats um, that will protect the coil from damage from the racks as well as keep it off the deck of the trailer in case water or whatever gets under, under your tarps onto it. Now, not all coils require um, tarping. Some of them are hot rolled and they're going to be processed and galvanized and so forth. And you'll see them going around Birmingham and the bigger cities, Bessemer and uh, up in uh, Pennsylvania and Ohio and Illinois and so forth where they manufacture these things at. And you'll see them running around without tarps. It just depends on what the coil is for and so forth. Um, before we begin on how to secure it, I think we need to cover the saddle. And here are two illustrations, one from the top, one from the side. Okay, first things first, you want to lay, if you know how wide the coil is going to be, you need to lay out your coil racks. Your first two equal 10,000. Then the second, the third one is another 10, so that gives you 20,000. And then another is 30,000 and so forth. So depending on how heavy the coil is, you need to you need to add enough coil racks to be secure and to uh to keep it on the damn wagon okay so this would do thirty thousand to do a forty thousand when you'd add a fifth rack to do fifty thousand you'd do a sixth rack okay uh, most of us our trucks are too damn heavy they you can't haul six uh fifty thousand or above but if you can if your truck's light enough you know four would do 30 five would do 40 six would do 50 and so forth then you would uh, add your timbers to the end of the rack now some of them the edge of the rack will look like this right here and your timber would go in here okay some of them are like our and some of the racks will look like this you'll have two little diamond or two little triangle pieces welded to the end of the rack and this is your wood right here. So I'm going to shade in the woody, the wooden part. This is just a standard uh, oak 4x4. Four four. And you just lay it on its edge like that. And it'll set right between the two pieces of angle iron on the end of it. But most of them are, like I said, it'll have the... It'll, uh, it'll look like this here. And you'll have a piece of timber to get, that has a, a bevel cut on it like that. Let me get it more centered up for you. It'll look like that and this here is your timber okay so if you have beveled timber you're more than likely going to have one with a a triangle a single triangle on the end this is it right here okay welded to the flat piece and you'll set your your timber that's angled right here the ones we have have the two metal uh triangles welded to them okay and the timber will sit in there like this. It's just a square timber, but because it the way it uh, these triangular pieces are, and they're probably a little bit longer than that. They're probably more like this here, out here, so it would support it a little bit more. 
but the metal never touches the freaking coil. Okay, back to the first illustration. You have your coil racks. Your, your uh, timber is set under it, okay? And then you have the rubber mats under that to, to uh, prevent any damage to the coil and to raise the coil above the timbers as well as the deck as well as the bottom portion of your your rack okay now from a side view if you're looking at it, if you're standing on the ground this is the top of the trailer here then you've got your coil rack and it goes all the way over and you got your pieces and then you got either your beveled timber like i've illustrated in this picture here you can see it's beveled okay your bevel 4 before, or you have the square one that's just set up like this one up here. All right, it doesn't matter. Then you take your rubber pads and you lay down. You can use two, three, four, five, however many racks I use. That's how many uh, 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 rubber pads I use, depending on how many coils. For a single coil I add, I would use a minimum of four. And for really big, heavy one, I'd probably use five or six. It just depends, as long as it's not touching the deck. But it'll give you that little quarter inch or eighth of an inch that guarantees that the coil is not setting on the darn deck. And um, another thing is, is if you don't, if you have it where you have multiple positions on the end, say you've got three of these triangular ones, you can haul a really big round coil or a smaller diameter coil and you'd have another one another uh triangular piece well if i can get my pencil to cooperate here and you'd move your timber from here to here okay which would basically on this illustration it would move them in a little bit and it would it would uh, pick the coil up higher so if it's not a really big diameter coil you'd have to move it into the center and if you had the standard ones with just one triangle and it's too wide a gap from in this direction here you'd want to put something else to give your uh to to uh move your wood in okay so it just depends on the coil and most of the time when they're going to load you the guys that uh, load these trucks they're they're smart enough to know that if the coil touches the deck you need to take have them pick it back up move it out of the way so it doesn't squish you <laughs> and then you need to find some type of uh, piece of wood or something that would work as a spacer all the way down the length of that wood in order to move the the uh the timber inward okay and uh okay so instead of being way over here it would move it up and your angle would be decreased because you'd be pushing it in even further like that and it would as you're moving it toward the center it would raise the coil up like that see so yeah you'd have to move it in but rarely ever do you see one like that but our coal racks we got three of the little triangular pieces i was thinking two but it's actually three and it just looks like a, a extended w an upside down w or an extended m if you would like to to uh know that but anyway get your rack set up center your trailer um don't go by the, necessarily by the center light but uh, that's the way i used to do it i would set it just behind the center turn signal so you know the light down here this always um the the turn signal light that's on the side of the trailer there okay let me get it up here where you can see it the one that's always there i would set it either just dead over the top of it or just a little bit behind it say one slot now here's the stake pocket these are the uh the uh rectangular or the square yeah well rectangular i guess uh well yeah i guess they're rectangular pieces and then you've got the little round stock but and then you got the next one and so forth down there i'd set it just behind it if it's on a spread axle and if not i'd set it dead in the center of the trailer because you want your axle weights even if it's one large big coil once it's on the deck and it's centered in the center of the trailer side to side and you know front to back where you want it then the fun begins all right chaining this booger down first things first you want to use if it's 5 16 chain i think they have a um i think they have a six thousand pound working load limit wll okay but for illustration purposes let's say the working load limit of your chain is 5,000 pounds 
let's say this is 48,000 pounds. So you need 24,000 pounds of tie down. Five, th five times five is 25,000. Okay, so you need a minimum of five chains. Easiest way to do that, you take your first chain, you run it right down, and I, I've got it off here just a little bit, but let's say to this round stock, wrap it all the way around the round stock and hook the hook back onto the chain itself. Run it right straight through the center, okay? So straight through the center. Second chain through the center right beside that one, pulling back to either a stake pocket or the tie down into deck. Your third chain would also go to the rear, either to a uh, tie down in the deck or to the next round stock or to the next stake pocket. The fourth one, go to the front, same deal applies, and the fifth one would go to the front. Okay? All right, here you go. Here's the side view, here's the call, here's the eye. First chain you're gonna pull it as straight down, up and down as possible. Whether it goes around a piece of the round stock <clears throat> on the rub rail or around a stake pocket, doesn't matter. But you gotta hook the chain. You, you go down, around, back over, and then you hook the hook onto the chain, not onto the rub rail. Okay? Same applies for all of them. Then you have two to the rear, two to the front. Okay? If you uh if you want to, you can pay take a piece of felt pad and throw over your chain you can throw a strap okay um, but regardless you want to have for a 48,000 pound coil you want to have at least five chains I always 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 add a six chain for safety's sake okay but the rule is however much a coil weighs you want half again that much in tie down so if, the four, if it's a 48,000 uh, pound coil, you need 24,000 pounds worth of uh, tie downs with that working load limit. And like I said, if your chain has a 6,000 pound working load limit, just round it down to five to give yourself a safety factor. Five times five is 25,000 pounds of tie down capability. So you just need five chains. I would always put a six chain. That's just me, that's for safety, and it would always go at the rear because if you stop, the coil will want to go to the front, toward the cab. They call this suicide. They call this suicide because your truck is up here. If your chains break, you don't have enough securement on there, they come loose for any reason, your coil is going toward the truck. It will roll, it'll, it'll just, if it were to bounce out of the saddle. Okay, that saddle is extra protection, but it's nothing guaranteed or if it were to slide It will go towards the truck and kill you Okay, so you definitely want at least on a 48,000 pound coil five, but I'd put six If it's heavier than that put seven if it's heavier than that put eight So five times five is 25,000 pounds worth of working load limit, but you uh, uh, for, I mean you got 5,000 pound working load limit for each chain that's not how much it will uh necessarily hold a, under a static load but that's its working load limit under dot formula okay i used the 3 8 inch change a 8800 pound working load limit on the 3 8 inch each tie down should be rated at what your chains are rated because you're it's no good if you got 8,000 pound capacity chain and your tie downs only rated at 5500 pounds so you need to find out depending on your trailer. And if it's a newer trailer, most of them are 8,000 or more pounds working load limit per tie down area. But that's something you need to find out from the company you're working for or get on the manufacturer's website, punch in the model number um, from the uh, data tag on the front of the trailer by the landing gear and find out what the working load limit is of your round stock, your stake pockets, and your tie downs in the deck. Those are, those are just you know good idea to do now these are the hard ones the um, okay we already covered the skiddy coils the last time I did a video on coils and they're sitting on the deck on a skid on a pallet basically you want three 
at least two or three of the big rubber mats that you'll carry to protect the coils with anyway or some that are provided by the uh, shipper and sometimes they don't so you definitely need to have these in your box but there'll be three rubber pads they'll be long enough to go all the way from end to end on the skid and if they're not put three on each end but that that prevents the coil the uh, skid from sliding then you need to crisscross two straps right over the center of the eye then a third one here and then you need to horseshoe a strap around the pallet itself right in here and tie it down front and back depending of course on how many coals you got and that right there will do it but always always have corner protectors under your straps under your chains all right i didn't show it in this illustration but i did well in this illustration okay metal corner protectors to protect the chain to protect the coil you buy that coil if you damage it so like i said find out the working load limit it should be grade uh 70 transport chain is what they call it it'll be on the uh the hook will have it it'll say grade 70 seven zero it'll uh and then if it's 5 sixteenths, it's got a 5,500 pound working load limit, if, if I'm not mistaken. And the 3 8 inch grade 70 transport is 8,800 8, pounds. So you need to find out what your chain's capable of, and then you'll know how to do it. But, again, depends on the trailer tie-downs, the stake pockets, the round stock, as well as the ones coming out of the deck. You'll need to find that out. <clears throat> They're not bad. Okay. Now I'll do a section on shot, uh, shot. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here is a uh, shotgun coil. It sits in line with the deck of the trailer. You build a saddle for them the same way you would a suicide coil. And the eye, of the, the, the empty eye of the coil is pointing toward the tractor and toward the rear of the trailer. Okay, generally, you want to build a saddle for it, like I just said, just like you would for the suicide coil they're usually smaller coils, so you don't necessarily you won't necessarily have as many racks or as many um, rubber pads to set it on. But I have used uh, one of my eight foot four by fours that we use for dunnage, and I've been able to use it for two or even three of them. But normally, how you do these is you'll take your change, you'll throw down the eye of coil, and you'll come out. Uh, of course, you'll have corner protectors and you'll come out away from the coal down to the deck of the trailer. And of course, depending on how many it is, you'll have it, several of them. You do not crisscross your chains inside the coal, okay? You horseshoe them. Okay, <clears throat> the blue represents the tunnel that is the eye of the coal. Okay, here's the eye. This is what it would represent. You will take your chains you will come in here like this, and you will horseshoe them outside the, the uh, to the rails, both sides. If you pull them straight against the coil, if it were to move at all, or the vibration of the chain, it will damage the coil, so you actually want it at an angle away from it. And depending on where your tie downs are, the, that's, you know, how much of an angle. Same thing applies here, okay? As to the other ones, I would build a barricade in front of it. <clears throat> We've covered it, but you take some of your four befores, you stack them on top of each other, you run a chain over the top and tie it down real tight, and that would give you, prevent it from sliding forward and damaging itself on your coils and so forth. Um, but yeah, you horseshoe it just depending on how many you need. And in this case, you can't do odd numbers like five chains if it's a really heavy coil. So you'd either do <clears throat> two, four, six, or eight. Or 10 or 12, just depending on what you got. But you always, you want to build a barricade in the front of it. And uh, basically that would just look like this. Your 4 before 4s would go across here. And you can go back and look at my barricade videos. You stack up, whoops, stack up you some, uh, some timbers. Loop your chain around the uh, stake parking or whatever the case may be, wherever it lands. Run it across, do the same thing on the other side, and then right in the center put a binder. Then run your chains over the outside of it. But you don't have to stack it up that high, maybe two. Okay? Just depending on how big the eye of the coal is and how much room you have from here down to the deck. Okay? Um, it's not that big a deal. 
on these i would definitely would run a strap over the top of them that's something uh, the manufacturer of the coil may raise all kind of hell about you may not they may not want you to because they may it may egg shape the damn coil which i don't understand that because they're going to put it on a machine and unwind it and flatten it back out anyway but that's just the way some of them are they like to really be dicks about it um but yeah back to how to do it if you're looking down at the top of the coil this blue is the tunnel which the eye makes your horseshoe just loop your chain through you don't want it too close to the to the to the face of the coil because if you are you you could damage it so you'll angle angle a little way out remember this is one time you do not do odd chains it's either two four six eight ten twelve whatever the case may be but this is one time you do not screw around with it so that will end the uh the coils um if i happen to get a hold of one in the near future where i can video i will definitely do a video on it um handling the chain there are some little little secrets not really secrets but some little handy hints and so forth on how to throw the chain through the eye without hitting the coil and how to get it all the way through so you ain't got to walk around and um you know going back to the suicide coil um you you if it's a really big coil and usually they are because they play about 100 weight you don't have much room on the deck okay to play around all right so the coil is sitting here and you can see in this illustration you barely have any room at all usually you'll have maybe a foot and the center chain you'll usually have to use a snap binder because there's just not enough room for a ratcheting binder between here and the deck you, you will never get it tight so snap binders you generally will be needed here and um sometimes these are too just depending on the diameter of the coil again like i said the outer the uh the well the the distance from the center of the eye to the bottom of the coil because if you don't have enough room it's not going to do you any damn good so a snap binder here ratchet in here 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 unless you just don't have to have the room so if you have the ratcheting the good binders is what i love to call them um you will definitely need to get one at least one snap binder when you're dealing with the when with coils but i hope this is helpful um mr abdi i really do um the company whoever you're working for ought to have their butts kicked for not um training you on coals these here can they can really hurt you ask questions the only dumb question is the one you don't ask um but if it sounds stupid it sounds unsafe when somebody's giving you advice like these guys that do this all the time just ignore them because they are they just because they do it stupid doesn't mean you should also just just use some sense really and really 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 tighten the p-wacken i mean really tighten the chains down really well make sure you got your corner protectors under them i know that's going to be the hardest part the most aggravating part is getting the the uh corner protectors under the chains to stay put while you're trying to tighten it down so snug it stop walk around check both sides because it's not just the side you're working on um and depending on how much room you got you may put have to put some of your binders on the driver's side and some of the binders on the passenger side because they'll interfere with each other okay um so that's something else you may have to alternate say put the binder here on this side and then on the next chain put it on the opposite side and come back over here so you know alternate and go around the other side and alternate you know not don't go back and forth back and forth and uh if you can do them from the ground so much the better because if you fall off you can get hurt so good luck um i hope hopefully this answers some of the questions and uh maybe like i said i'll be able to do some uh, good video in the near future but just there's never any telling but anywho thank you very much for the, the question thank you very much for watching and i hope this helps just be safe be careful and uh check it check your chains every so often just undo a few bungees across there pull the tarp up and check make sure everything stays tight because you don't want one of these big boys to get out get out of uh and hurt you but you take care thank you very much